Hello everyone, and welcome to my 16th episode and 16th week on the Sagamore. And uh, I gotta apologize if I sound a little congested. I had a head cold this week, but uh, I actually had my 120th day uh, just the other day, which means I met my four-month commitment, and uh, I'm going one more month to uh, be able to go home for vacation and uh, be home for the holidays. And uh, we're currently underway, back on our way to Houston, and then from there we're heading right back to Europe. So we got quite a bit of a trip before I head home. And uh, I would show you what's going on outside, but uh, as you can see, we got nothing but containers. So not really much to see, plus the cranes, but uh, we got a full ship this time. We're not empty like we were before, so uh, that'll help with stability, actually. The more weight the ship has, the better chance it has to uh, prevent rolling uh, whenever waves hit us. When we had no containers on board, uh, the slightest wave would make us shift, roll, and pitch like crazy. So, uh, fortunately, nobody got sick, seasickness, but uh, we do have... Um, some illnesses uh, on board right now. Like I said, I have a head cold, and uh, when you get sick on board a ship, it can spread pretty quickly. So you got to maintain cleanliness and to uh, wash your hands often, which uh, I do anyway, being in the engine room and working with, uh, you know, dirty stuff all the time and cleaning bilges and sludge tanks. So Let's go ahead and uh, dive into today's topics. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy the music tracks that I have for you today. All right, hello and welcome. So, uh, I had mentioned that I wasn't feeling well, and um, other people have started to show signs of not feeling well either. I, you know, I hear coughing and sniffing uh, from everybody on the ship, so you just got to be careful because we're all working and living together and uh, being in these conditions you want to try and be healthy for uh, work and uh, being available for work and um, so uh, I'm also wearing another sweater but actually believe it or not this is not a sweater that I brought on board with me I actually found this sweater uh, it was abandoned here and um, uh, it was actually on the rack for, or not the rack, but um, in the locker for third assistant engineer. We actually have a changing room down in the engine room where uh, you can wear regular clothes down to it and then change into a boiler suit or your work clothes or your work boots. Um, I actually did that a lot when I was on the Integrity. But uh, on this ship, I just wear my work clothes down in the engine room and get right to work. But uh, we had a changing room and in the third engineer's locker was a sweater. And um, normally I don't use uh, or take clothes from previous um, engineers, but uh, this looked like a really nice sweater, so I washed it, and, uh, and I'm wearing it today. Uh, it has a, you know, it's nice and comfortable, nice design. It has a uh, stripe of the uh, U.S. flag, which, uh, you know, I think is very patriotic. And uh, it also has... Um, uh, uh, this grunt style uh, logo and uh, even though it says GS for grunt style uh, GS is actually um, an abbreviation for a username that I use online as an alias and uh, that, that's another reason why I wanted to keep it and um, it's a good sweater and I thought I'd wear it today and uh, hopefully as I'm filming we don't get any more surprise drills like we had the other day which I can appreciate because when emergencies come up, they're never announced, they just happen. But uh, it did interrupt my sleep, which I wasn't too happy about. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Again, uh, emergencies can come up anytime. It could come up in the next minute for all we know. Hopefully not, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how the day goes. And uh, let's go ahead and discuss some random facts because they're always a lot of fun. Uh, for the game of Monopoly, which I'm sure we're all familiar with, the most money that you can lose in one turn is $5,070. Um, unfortunately, they don't explain how you lose that much money, and I've tried to think about it, and I feel like you can actually lose a lot more. Because the, uh, the one space on the board 
that you can lose the most money on is obviously boardwalk at the end of the board or uh, path around the board right before go and uh, I figure with a hotel on it it the uh, fine is two thousand dollars so I figure for your one turn you roll a die and you get a double which means you'll get to roll again and you land on boardwalk so that's two thousand dollars you just lost and then you roll again you go by go so uh, you do collect two hundred dollars I don't know if that's figured into this cost, but we'll go ahead and waive that for right now. Let's see how much money you will actually have to pay out to other people or to the bank. So you roll doubles again and you land on, I think, community chest this time. And uh, there, there is a, um, a, a card that says go right to boardwalk. So you land on that and you get that card. So you go back to boardwalk again and that's another two grand you gotta pay out. So you're already down $4,000 and you got one more roll. Now you roll this one and you don't wanna go to jail by getting a third double, so this one is not a double and it's your last turn anyway. And then you land on chance. And uh, again, I'm probably getting these wrong. Uh, maybe I get the spaces reversed or, or I'm not calculating this right. I haven't looked at a Monopoly board in years, but you land on chance and then it says go back three spaces or maybe it's four spaces and um, you could actually land on boardwalk again by getting that card so that's six thousand dollars that you, you potentially lose in just one turn now, at least that's my logic behind it or at least that's what I think it is but uh, I could be wrong on that <coughs> but uh, Another random fact about Monopoly is that the longest game of Monopoly in a bathtub was 99 hours. I've got kind of a couple questions there, but I'm not really going to dive into that one. Uh, just to change direction a little bit, um, Isaac Newton had dropped out of school when he was a teenager. And I believe he was the one who invented calculus, which uh, has made many students since then either very intelligent or very angry because that is a incredibly difficult math subject and I actually didn't have a problem at least in college with calculus I know I took calculus in high school and uh, it was really advanced course and it was really difficult and I think I hate to admit it I think I got out of that course with a C plus or a B minus but when I took calculus again in college I had um, all the you know foundation background about all the rules and whatnot and uh, I really excelled in fact I was actually tutoring other people in calculus because I had um, taken it already in high school I was prepared in college for it and um, uh, I actually ended up getting like almost a perfect 100% throughout the whole course in calculus 1 and then calculus 2 was difficult there was a lot of uh, derivatives and integrals with that one and then calculus 3 uh, kind of whooped my butt um, I think I got a C uh, in calculus 3 uh, again but uh, you know those are college days and they're gone and actually I don't think I've used calculus once since then uh, I know I haven't used it on the job you know I just use basic math and um, maybe a little bit of algebra but that's about it um, so Aristotle thought uh, blood cooled the brain, but it was actually determined uh, as recent as I think like five or six years ago that yawning actually cools the brain, not your blood. But um, I can see where that could make sense. But uh, yeah, I, they for the longest time they couldn't figure out why people yawn, but apparently it's to cool the brain. Um, I guess when you get bored, your brain overheats trying to keep up or be focused with stuff so maybe that's why when we're bored we yawn or when we're tired the brain is overworking and needs to cool down so that's why uh, we yawn so I guess that's you know what's going on there and just uh, another um, quick fact uh, to um, you know have a little bit of uh, you know remembrance for 9-11 which happened last week um, all the dirt from the foundation that was taken to build the World Trade Center was actually taken and dumped into the Hudson River to form the location now known as Battery City Park, which I thought was pretty interesting. And I mean, that's a lot of dirt to remove 
um, to build a building uh, and then to build this uh, city or this park. And uh, I remember going there to um, actually sit for my license to get uh, my Coast Guard license. I had to take seven exams over the course of four days. And it was pretty nerve wracking and uh, and it was really difficult. Um, But uh, I was able to pass them all and uh, sail as a third assistant engineer. And uh, it was right next to the Staten Island Ferry, if I remember correctly. And I remember I would go there and uh, walk around the the vendors and get some breakfast before going to sit for the test. So kind of uh, eased my mind a little bit, but it didn't make things any easier. Those tests were uh, pretty tough. But uh, I feel like if I took those tests again for the same position, I would easily ace all of them because I've been in this... um, career for at least 10 years now uh i think 11 and a half now so uh how about we uh check out some of this music i think you're really gonna like these tracks today um so uh let's go ahead and uh set the timer um and get uh the first one going hang on a second all right there we go I to crack my finger to get the music going. Uh, I love this uh, game that this music comes from. Uh, the music in this game is incredible. Uh, all of it is. And uh, this one is called Wall is Stop, starting off from the game Baba is You, which is a incredibly unique and very original puzzle game where you win by changing the rules of the puzzle. Uh, It's a little difficult to explain, but uh, it's a wonderful game. It's a lot of fun. I love the music. Uh, It's very retro and very adventurous. And uh, you get to um, play as a uh, a floofy cat and do these puzzles in these um, rooms. And based on the rules in the puzzle, we'll tell you how to get through the puzzle and to get to the goal which is usually a flag but you could actually change the uh um the rules of the flag to be like a rock or a plant or uh anything you you can even win by touching the wall if you're able to change the rules and there are some rules you can't change but if you change the rules in certain puzzles you can actually work your way to uh, winning the puzzle without actually originally reaching what was the goal. Uh, again, it's really weird and uh, different and difficult to explain, but uh, it's a wonderful puzzle game that uh, anybody can just pick up and play. You know, it's for all ages and, and it's wonderful and I highly recommend it. And uh, we actually have three other tracks that I'm going to play today from that same game because the music is just that good so um, I definitely want to try and uh, play through all of them Uh, the tracks are kind of long but uh, I do want to play them for a couple minutes so you can enjoy and feel the uh, uh, the tunes so to speak Uh, because I I just love listening to them a lot of them are very relaxing some of them are fun and uh, some of them are, are interesting, but uh, we'll go ahead and play the next one in a minute. The next one is actually from a uh, more modern game, I think it's from last year. Uh, it's a Nintendo Switch game, and uh, it's called uh, Paper Mario The Origami King, which actually has a lot of very music tracks, I think over 240 of them for this one game, which is pretty ridiculous. But um, I think we'll go ahead and uh, um, messing up my time watch here. All right, there we go. Uh, we're gonna start this next one. Uh, this one is a lot of fun, and uh, it, it's really um, uh, exciting, I guess. This, this is called Eddie River from Paper Mario the Origami King. And the only reason I uh, like it is because um, you're traveling along this river and you're avoiding obstacles and collecting coins and um, collecting other uh, items along the way. And in order to get a trophy, uh, a prize, you have to collect every single coin in this river. 
and it's no easy task. The coins are everywhere, and you have to navigate this river on a boat, which uh, doesn't have the best controls, and uh, it, it is difficult to, to do. And if you miss just one coin, just one coin, you got to do the whole thing again if you want to get that trophy. And uh, yeah, I think I attempted it like 40 or 50 times because it was just so difficult. And uh, it plays this music um, along the river. And uh, I guess because I listened to it for so long, it's just a nice fun beat in my mind. And uh, it just adds to the, um, the game, I guess, uh, of navigating this river. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun, and I think you'd enjoy it too. It's only uh, a two minute track, so we'll be able to get into the next uh, Baba Is You track in just a moment. And uh, I'm really, I really like this next one from uh, the game. Because uh, it just reminds me of uh, like uh, a deep water temple, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, so uh, yeah, we got the Eddy River going, and uh, I'll uh, explain more about Paper Mario: The Origami King with um, the next track. Uh, I actually have two other tracks from the same game, Paper Mario, and. Uh, um, I, I really like the next one. I kind of mentioned the next one uh, in a previous message or a previous video, but I'll elaborate more on it when we get to it. So, okay, uh, we're going to um, start the next one. This is uh, from Baba Is You, and it is called Water Is Sink, and uh, this is the lake. And uh, I just love this because it, it describes like deep water really well, or I get that impression of it whenever I listen to this music. Like, just imagine yourself immersed in um, deep water in a lake or other body of water. Um, and uh, it's dark, but it's not dangerous. It's actually um, a bit mysterious, but uh, it's safe. And um, you're down there, it's dark. But I also feel like you're in a uh, like in a uh, flooded temple, like uh, an ancient temple that's been um, uh, buried under all this water, and you're just exploring it, and you get to see a whole bunch of different fish, and uh, you get to ju just explore the unknown, because uh, obviously there's just so much more about the ocean or the or lakes or bodies of water that we don't know about, you know, because we don't know what's lurking down there, we don't know what's resting down there, but uh, this uh, soundtrack is just um, very relaxing, very uh, thought-provoking, in my opinion, and uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, the puzzles are, um, th this is still early in the game, so the puzzles are still kind of easy, but you still have to think outside the box with some of these puzzles, and um, and it, it's really interesting. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I, you rarely come across music that I will actually describe a uh, scene or make you feel like you're in that situation or, or uh, what, what's another word for it, or, or how to describe something. Um, and uh, I, I think a lot of these music tracks um, hit that really well or do that really well uh, to make you feel like you're, you're somewhere else. Like, like I said, that this music makes me feel like I'm underwater and uh, in the lake um, and in just exploring the deep. Um, again, it, it's dark, it's mysterious, it's exotic and uh, you know, it's a lot of fun you get to explore. So we'll go ahead and jump into the next one in just a few seconds. Now what I was saying before is that this next one, uh, in a previous video I had said that there is certain music that if I had ever owned a restaurant or a casino or managed one or uh, a hotel, I would play this music over the, uh, the, you know, the intercom, the loudspeakers, and, uh, and this next song uh, definitely is what I would have um, playing in the lobby of a hotel if I ever managed or owned one. So let's go ahead and uh, get that one started. And uh, this one is uh, called Sniff City Royal Hotel for Paper Mario the Origami King. And uh, it does play during um, 
the uh, uh, lobby music uh, at this hotel. I believe this is the third area of the game that you go to, and um, while I love the idea of the game, uh, paper versus origami, um, that you know you're kind of battling one another. I feel like the final boss or um, the, the main enemy that that's causing all the uh, I guess drama in Mario's world uh, had a very weak motivation for what he was doing. Um, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who wants to play the game or is playing the game, but uh, the reason why he took over the Mushroom Kingdom was a pretty weak reason. I mean, it, at least with Bowser, you know he's just trying to uh, gain power and to control Princess Peach, but um, this Origami King, uh, the reason that he showed up and started um, taking over and uh, having a grudge against the Toads, uh, commonly known as the uh, you know the local people for the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, again, I, I feel like they could have put a lot more thought into it. Uh, it almost felt rushed and not necessary. Uh, again, his motivation for what he was doing was kind of weak. But the game overall was a lot of fun, and I loved going through all the different worlds. There were only five of them. Uh, I was kind of hoping there'd be a little bit more. Uh, five normal levels and then the final level. But, because most Mario games I feel like have um, more than that, they have at least eight or nine. So for this game to have only five plus a final level, I felt like it was a little short. I felt like, I think it still took me a few days to complete the whole game, but I feel like it could have been a lot more. But they put a, a much stronger emphasis into um, trophies and rewards and to fill out a uh, museum um, that you would visit and go to see all your rewards as you collected them throughout the game. Um, so it was more or less like a, a collection game than it was uh, more of an adventurous game in my opinion. But uh, I love that m music. Um, I, I would always tell myself I would play in the lobby of a hotel if I ever owned one and I don't know if I ever will, but it, it's just a, you know, a fantasy thought in my head. Uh, we're going to go back to another Baba Is You track. This one is called Box Has Key, and this is the Temple Ruins. And um, it has a really good beat. Uh, I love listening to it. Uh, I listen to it a lot um, when I'm at home, actually. And uh, this is where the puzzles actually start to get really difficult. Um, not as difficult as some of the later ones. Uh, I know there are, I can think off the top of my head, at least two puzzles that gave me the hardest time. And the solution was just so simple and right there in front of me, it, it was right under my nose. I don't know how I missed it, but I wanted to kick myself in, in every area <laughs> uh, when I finally realized the solution and just how simple these puzzles were but they baked my brain for probably weeks maybe even months trying to figure out what what's the gimmick what's the mechanic to figure the, these game uh, these puzzles out and that's what I love about this game because uh, you can change the rules and you can um, mo most puzzles are linear that they only have like one direct solution um, but some of them have multiple solutions which I also find uh, creative unique and uh, and a lot of fun so um, you know because if you approach a puzzle with multiple endings or multiple solutions you know you may think of it one way while somebody else may think of it another but you still both win the puzzle so you know that's great um, but as you listen to these titles like water is sink box has key these are some of the um, directions or uh, rules that some of these puzzles have and you can change it around like box has key you can later on or you can adjust it to say like um, uh, wall has key or rock has key and then based on that you can um, acquire a key and uh, use it to open a door to get to the goal or you can say uh, key has key or uh, bug has key um, or uh, key has box you, you can re rearrange it in like so many different ways and uh, it's just incredible and uh, I love this soundtrack uh, it's um, a lot of fun it's um, adventurous and uh, and it's also kind of casual too. just mellow out you know try and just have fun solving these puzzles you don't have to go too crazy and uh, 
yeah, it, it's um, it's a pretty big game too, and it actually gets pretty intense towards the end. When, once you beat all the normal worlds, you actually start getting into deeper worlds, and uh, it's um, very difficult, but also very interesting. It, I think the game itself has like over 220 puzzles, and uh, I think I solved all of them. There might be one or two that I might have missed, because you actually have to search for these levels. It's not just, you know, you complete one level and go to the next. You actually have to do something either on the game world or in the game uh, uh, level to create future puzzles. So I might have missed one or two, but um, it was really interesting how they uh, created this game, and it actually won quite a few rewards um, at like gaming uh, events. So uh, and and rightly so. Again, it was very original. Um, I haven't seen a game like that, uh, having grown up and up to this point, so for them to, uh, you know, make, make such a unique and original game, uh, my hat's off to them. So, uh, we'll go ahead and dive into the next one. This is the, uh, last Paper Mario Origami King track that I have, and this one's called Ice Velemental Mountain, and, uh... Again, when you play Paper Mario, you're assuming the role as paper. And, and it's funny, because they, they took this game in a new direction, where some of the bosses are all, like, enemies of paper. Enemies of paper, so to speak. Uh, because you actually fight um, colored pencils, you fight uh, elastic bands, you fight um, scotch tape. You fight a uh, hole puncher, you fight scissors, and you fight staplers. And um, I just thought that was hilarious. And uh, I, I don't like um, the, the scissors boss because it will one-shot you, and rightly so. That thing will just cut right through paper, which is what Paper Mario is. So you have to go into that boss battle knowing that you only have one hit, and you gotta work your way to... Uh, uh, avoid getting hit throughout the whole battle. It's like you gotta hit the boss 100% and you have to 100% dodge his attacks. And uh, I thought the battle system was very unique, but also very different. Um, one that I haven't seen in video games before. And I think they did a really good job with it. Um, again, it was different, unique, and original. But uh, it still kind of was unusual. <clears throat> and it left something to be desired. And uh, the mechanics were a little weird and wonky, but uh, I, I still give them props for uh, being creative with the battle system. Again, it was something that I haven't seen in any other game before, and, uh, and I think it worked. I know people have their opinions of it, they thought it was good, they thought it was bad, but I think it was uh, unique. And, uh, you know, you enjoy these games for what they present to you, and every once in a while you want something different fresh and, uh, and I think they did a, a good approach with that so um, but this song uh, it, it just it has a mysterious effect to it and it's also very cold because I mean you are in an ice mountain you're going to get this elemental which is an elemental quality that you need in order to fight the final boss and I like how they call it elemental because vellum is a type of paper uh, it's a paper that I actually used in college to do tracings on when drawing out systems for the engine room. <clears throat> and uh, I thought they were really creative with that um, title, Velemental. And um, you get earth, fire, water, and ice. Those are the four Velementals that you get in the game to proceed and solve puzzles, fight enemies, and take on the final boss. So, <clears throat> pardon my cold here, but... Uh, We'll go ahead and uh, finish with that track. And uh, I love this next track. Uh, this is the last track from uh, Baba Is You. And uh, it's called Fruit on Grass in the Garden World. And um, you can just fall asleep to this uh, soundtrack. It's just very mellow. And I absolutely love it. And, uh, and, and in this part of the game, this world, the puzzles are very difficult. Um, they're, they're all linear, which means they all have only one solution, but um, figuring them out, you really need to have a strong understanding of how the mechanics of the game work. 
and to manipulate the rules in very specific ways and to maneuver through the puzzle in very specific ways in order to solve them. They were really difficult, but I enjoyed playing them. It really kept my brain active and fresh trying to figure them out, and, uh, and I just loved it. I can fall asleep to this track. It's just so mellow. I envision myself on a, uh, a warm, dark night. It's late in the evening. And I'm just laying in a field of clean cut grass and um, you know there's no mosquitoes there's no bugs I'm just laying on the ground uh, staring up into the night sky looking at the stars uh, that's what this music reminds me of it's just a, uh, a very starry um, uh, dreamy night and uh, I love listening to it it, it really relaxes me and it, it just makes me you know, doze off into a, a nice slumber, so to speak. And um, but I, I didn't like doing those puzzles; they were really tough. But again, they're a lot of fun. And uh, maybe uh, in the next video, I can share more tracks from uh, Baba Is You. Some that are a little bit more intense, some that are more unique or different. Um, but uh, you can definitely uh, listen to these tracks for hours on end and never get bored of them. And uh, again, I highly recommend the game to everybody uh, out there. You get to play as, like I said, a cat, and, and even you can change as uh, the character, because uh, Baba is you can be changed. You can, and he has two other friends, um, KK and me. And you can uh, actually change the rules to be any one of those other characters or any other object in the uh, game. You can be a rock, you can be a bug, you can be the flag, you can be the winning object in the game itself. So it, it's just uh, an incredible game. There's just so many things you can do with the puzzles and it's a lot of fun. Uh, please definitely look it up. I, I highly recommend it. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to end... Uh, this video with um, uh, a track from Tormented Souls. We'll go ahead and start it. This is called The Final Walk and this is at the end of the game and, uh, and I think it's very rela relaxing and peaceful. It's um, a breath of relief I think because you had just beaten the final boss of the game and uh, what you do from here on out <clears throat> will determine the kind of ending that you get. I've been told online that uh, there are multiple endings to this game, but I've only ever found two of them. And I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who may be playing this game as well, but uh, when you beat the final boss, uh, you're in this final walk, you're in this peaceful um, setting, uh, even though you're still in the um, mansion turned hotel that is the stuff of nightmares, all the enemies are dead, uh, there's no more threat and you're free to walk around and uh, I guess to, uh, explore so to speak but you're not uh, in any danger and uh, you can just relax and you can determine how you want to end the game. You could actually just escape the hotel or not the hotel but the hospital and uh, leave and win the game or you can actually go back and uh, the game is about finding these twin girls that are in this hospital and um, at the end of the game, you can actually go back and save one of them. Now, I don't want to say any what has happened to the other one, um, or what the whole story is, because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but um, those are the only two endings that I found, and uh, as much as I love the game and its puzzles, except for one or two of them, uh, I felt like the boss, the final boss, was a bit um, uh, rushed, maybe? Uh, I felt like they had to come up with something quick to put the whole story together and I felt like they could have put a little bit more thought into the boss. I mean, the boss itself was unusual and why, uh, you know, the, the characters developed th this boss, uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, the, the story was a little difficult to follow and plus there were also glitches in the game that I had to deal with uh, with regards to ammo and health. And uh, also, some of the notes and journals that you find throughout uh, would actually um, not register in the game. This is for the Nintendo Switch version. I don't know if you... And, and the game goes across different platforms as well. You can play it on the PlayStation 4. You can also play it on the computer. And, uh, and I think maybe um, 
uh, the Xbox consoles, I'm not sure, but uh, unfortunately this was pretty glitchy for me and it was difficult to get through, but uh, I did manage to get through the game and, uh, and, I, and I love this uh, ending theme and uh, I figured I would use it as the ending theme for this video. So I hope you enjoyed all the track and uh, definitely check out these games and um, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for joining me today and uh, have a good night.